He rode up on me in front of the whole block. Don't care if he's your boy. I gotta represent. Get in the car, Scott. What's up, YouTube and Power fans? It's your boy Nino, and I'm back with another Power video. In my previous video, I stated that if I were Kanan, I'll start making Symphony my ally so that I can cover up my flaws. Just as I predicted, Kanan seemed to be making that move to becoming allies with his mother's boyfriend. And not only that, but Kanan seemed to be giving Busket the green light to go out with his mother. You really like my mom. I do. That's cool. And in episode 5, we have seen him using Busket to clean up his mess instead of calling any of his uncles or even his mother. Now, that is a smart move from Kanan, but again, this will end up creating misunderstanding between Rock and Symphony some way, somehow. If time allows me, I'll tell you why. In this video, I will start with the main topic of why Scrappy switched side and joined Unique's camp. Now, Scrappy has not only joined Unique, but he has become a mole. Jukebox defines Scrappy to us as one of the most loyal soldiers to Raquel. This means that it will be difficult for Scrappy to betray Raquel. Now, we all know Rack didn't send Kanan after Scrappy and Scrappy made it known that if Rack wanted him out for some reason, she wouldn't send Kanan after him. This statement is absolutely true and one can say Kanan coming after Scrappy was a wrong idea he shouldn't have done that, but this happens to be the key to the successful plan of Rack making Scrappy a mole in Nick's camp. I'll tell you why. Now, during the brawl between Kanan and Scrappy, one of Nick's guys saw the incident and how Scrappy and Kanan got arrested at the end. This scene where Nick's guy saw Scrappy pushed into the police car alone is enough ticket for Scrappy into Nick's world because any story Scrappy will cook up will be legit. Now, how did Scrappy become a mole? When Scrappy was released at the police station later that night, Rack met him walking alone and wondering why. Now, the sight of Rack makes Scrappy thought she knew he hit her son, so he panicked and told her Kanan came at him, so he has to represent regardless that he is her son. As confused as Rack was for a minute, she asked him to get in the car. Now, this is where the whole plan went down. We never saw Scrappy and Rack discuss anything which was intentional of the writers because they want to keep that part of the puzzle from we the audience. The next thing we saw was Scrappy joining forces with Nick, talking about how he's so down with Raquel for mistreating him. Now earlier, Raquel told her brothers they need to go offense. They are not going to go to war but they will not lay down either. Hence, they have to find out Nick's moves and all he's about. So this is where Scrappy came in the picture. And Scrappy is the best option at this point to be the most since everything seems or do, he is parting ways with Raquel. But trust me, this is the game. And now that Raquel has taken advantage of the situation, she planned with Scrappy to make it look as if she has betrayed him and he has stopped working for her. So she sent him over to Nick's place to act like he is done with her for good. Now, why Nick believes Scrappy's story is because of this same guy who witnessed the fight scene earlier. So now it's up to Scrappy to be consistent with his storyline and act accordingly or else if Nick finds out he was playing him, he will slice him into pieces. So this is how Raquel planted Scrappy as a mole in Nick's camp. Now moving on, why was Detective Howard so sure on the fact that Kanan is his son? Kanan is my son. It's not only the calculation of the period Def Khan went inside and how long he stayed inside, but I strongly believe that the detective used the blood tissue Kanan left on his table to run a DNA test, which came out positive. So if you realize, he didn't only go to Raquel to ask her questions, but he rather informed her about the fact that he is 100% sure that Kanan is his son. And now there is a huge pressure on Raquel as to what to do with this situation. Question is, Will Raquel give in and admit the fact that her secret is no longer a secret or she'll push hard to make this look ridiculous? Now what is in for the detective? He only needs a match to his health condition and he will fight hard to get solution to his problem. And as to if Kanan will be willing to help him is another story. And I'm very sure it will be very difficult for Kanan to readjust to this new development since it has been established that he doesn't even like him anyways. Now, on the part of Raquel, if she keeps Kanan's father away from him and he dies, he will not forgive her the same way Tommy felt about Kate the first time he found out that his father was still alive and inside, which is normal to feel so by the way. But in this case, Kanan will feel that was the chance for him to know him and also to have saved him 
and he will feel he has been denied the chance to know his real father. Now that Canaan is becoming rebellious, trust me, I don't want to be in Raquel's shoes. Now, about the person who snitched on the stash house, we all know is Davina, but then the store owner's wife had famous and Duke mentioned Davina as the snitch. Question is, will she snitch on the snitch? I think yes, and this is why I think the woman will snitch. Now, we all remember the first time the woman and her husband were established, right? She seemed to have been abused by the husband and kind of looked scared of the man. But then, the man seemed to be scared of Raquel and the woman noticed. Now, if this woman wants to gain Raquel's trust and her protection from her husband, she will surely tell Raquel exactly what she heard Jukebox and Famous discuss in her presence. But what will be the consequence of all this? If the shop lady exposes the Vina and Rag gets to find out it was her who snitched, and let's say she killed her, Kenan will for the rest of his life think it was Jukebox who told his mom about the Vina. This will possibly be the beginning of friction between Kenan and Jukebox because Kenan will feel Jukebox did that because he threatened her about her secrets. Now, in my last video, I mentioned that Jukebox will be caught by Nicole's parents and when that happens, she won't have it easy and they will stop her from coming to their house. Well, it has happened already and Jukebox has gotten her first heartbreak. Moving forward, this is going to change Jukebox and I believe this will be the beginning of her ruthlessness. Now, talking about Kanan's arrest, Stephanie will possibly not tell Raquel about it. When she finds out he knew, she'll be upset in that he's been lying to her. What Stephanie can possibly say is, not telling you I bail your son out is not the same as lying to you. And the police arrest is not secret either. And that he just didn't tell her because he didn't want to come between she and her son. Like she stated to him from the beginning. Nobody comes between Kanan and I. But trust me, a lot is going to happen in coming episode. But I hope Kanan will not fuck Raquel's plans up by using Scrappy as a mole. If Kanan is not informed about the move of making Scrappy a mole in Nick's camp and he finds out that Scrappy is working with Nick, Kanan might foolishly want to take Scrappy out just like he did to Buck 20. So for this Scrappy and Raquel plan to work, Kanan needs to be aware and back off else he will end up killing Scrappy thinking he was really a snitch on his mom's side. Now what do you think? What are your thoughts? Leave your comments and your thoughts. If you like this video, kindly subscribe to my channel, share, like and leave your comments below. I'll be there to respond to all your theories and your input. Catch you guys again in my next video. Thanks for watching.